Hello, friends. Thanks for tuning in to the Success Factor podcast. I'm the host, Trent Christensen. In today's episode, I pull up with Dr. Victor Manzo. He's actually a certified chiropractor who has now moved on to business mindful coaching, and he's a self-mastery expert, an author, and a podcaster. He's the podcaster and host of The Mindful Experiment, which has over 380 episodes and ranked in the top 1% podcast globally. We had a lot of fun. We talked about a lot of great things that can lead to your success, that has led to his success, some of his opportunities for growth and what he's learned and been able to incorporate and move on to something greater and bigger than chiropractic work, but now making a change in a lot of people's lives who tune into him and uh, read his books and also hire him as a coach. Uh, Check it out. Here we go. Thank you. So now the biggest question I have is Vic or Victor, what do you go by? Whatever's easier for you. All right. I'm going to call you Vic because it's short and sweet. Short and sweet is usually what people like. And I know more successful Vicks than I do Victors. And I don't know what it is with short names, but when you have a shorter name, it seems like you're more bound to have success. I, it just flows. Like, that's why, like, like Dr. If I had Dr. Victor Manzo Jr., that's just a long thing. But if it's like Dr. Vic Manzo, it's like that has a nice little ring to it. Yeah, that's but cool. And you- to me, it doesn't matter. But it's like one of those things. Some people, you know, it's just like, oh, no, that 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 would be better. And I'm like whatever works for me. I'm like, at the end of the day, I can, I'm, I'm pretty easy going on a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I like it, Vic. Appreciate that. It's going to take me some getting used to that, but so, okay. <laughs> Not that we've been speaking for years or anything, but, <laughs> um, I love it. So you, you, you went straight out of like under school or undergrad into chiropractic school. Is that what you did? And then you practice? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you still, are you still practicing? No, I, uh, I moved from uh, Chicago to Knoxville in December, um, closed my office because it was hard to sell due to the market in Illinois. And uh, I, I've been doing coaching for a little over three years. And I just said, you know what, that's, I can have a bigger reach that way. Why don't we uh, uh, go full time into that and, and really blow that up? And so it's been, uh, it's been a fun journey. And I'm, I have, we look back and my wife and I were literally having dinner last week. And we're like, should did this sooner. And I was like, I know, but it's all good. We're here now. That's what matters. That's cool. Yeah. You got to live in the present. That's for sure. That's that, I'm glad you so made much. that shift, but I want to talk about that. Like what, what kind of drove you down that? De- that's a big decision, right? Especially those who go into the investment of becoming a chiropractor and opening an office, like what ultimately really contributed to you making that big of a shift? You know, I got to a point where, you know, I hit ultra success in my business in about five years. And then it came a point where it wasn't the business I wanted. So I reinvented myself. Uh, became a pedi- pediatric focus, pregnancy focused, fertility focused, and I ran that office and I did it on my terms. So I did everything what I was told the first five years. And then the next five years, I did everything what I wanted to do. I call it having my cake and eating it too. And uh, we got to a point where it was great, but there was this, this feeling inside of me for uh, probably after like three years where it was like, I wasn't hitting a mark. Like I started looking at my vision and looking at what I wanted to do with my life and and the money was great. My wife and I had a great life. We can travel, do anything we wanted. But it was it was one of the things where I, I just had this like missing of like, I'm not doing enough. And that could just be something conditioned from a young age. But it was one of those things where I just felt like I needed to reinvent myself. I needed to, 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 to do something drastic in a way. It just was calling inside me. And so Tennessee kept calling us and we kept going out there to Knoxville area and, and checking it out a couple times a year. Uh, and we loved it. We we're like, this is, I want to be closer to nature. I want to be more in the South. I lived, I grew, I went to Dallas, but that wasn't really the South because it was a big city. Uh, but when I was in Fort Worth, that, that felt like that was, I was in Texas and I just, there's parts I liked about it. And I was just telling her, I want to have a slower pace of living. I want to be closer to nature, better weather. And we just started evaluating our lives and what we really wanted. And so it just got to a point where, It just, it was either we continue where we are and continue our life the way it was and have the money that we had and the success and the the impact on our community and everything that we created for the last, myself for the last 12, 10, 10 years, give or take. And my wife was part of this for the journey for the last six and just continue that path or we go and do what we want and choose what we want. So it's kind of one of the things where we like, we, we say we chose happiness over money in a sense, 
because we really wanted to have a certain life and be in a certain way. And it, it wasn't an easy journey. It was, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs before we thought about getting to that point. And there was other hurdles, hurdles that showed up. I mean, I had a very successful practice. The problem was my price tag was on the higher end. And when you have a market that was not good for selling businesses at that time, um, it was either we can stay for a couple more years or we decide to let it go. And it wasn't, it was in August, 2021, we decided that we were going to take it off the market and we were just going to let it go at the end of the year. And then we were going to make the transition. And it's amazing because when you are in the right place at the right time, that's designed for you, everything will work out so beautifully. And it did. I mean, literally my wife flew out the, that weekend, uh, end of September or end of uh, um, August. And she literally found a house. It was a last minute thing. Like it was literally, she looked at all the homes and then <clears throat> last minute I was looking at a house and I said, you got a flight leaving at 1130. Can you see this house at nine and still get to the airport, airport and take out, take off? I just, I just saw it just came up. And so she went, I'm living in that house now. She chose the house. She picked it. She saw it. I never did. I just saw videos and, and images, uh, but that worked out. But here's the beautiful thing. That same weekend, while my wife is out in, in Tennessee, we had a buyer come in and they loved our house and they put, we, we were under contract at the same time and everything worked out beautifully and everything just was a beautiful ride from that point on. That's a pretty cool story, man. Like, how did you know that you needed to make a change in the business and your source of like, uh, you know, profession or method of profession and method of income? How did you not know it wasn't something else that was nagging at you? How did you narrow it down and identify it that it was related to how, what you were doing professionally? You know, it's one of those things where I had always had a big vision. I, I have a lot of visions and what I want to create in my life, but it was one of those things where uh, I want to help on a global level, not just on a, a city level or even a community level. And so it was one of those things where when I really started to do some deep soul seeking and looking at my life, it was like, I can do things great as a chiropractor here in this community. I can get into other aspects of things, but I really wanted to get to a level. I always had a vision. Uh, when I was in chiropractic school, there was a guy named Dr. John D. Martini. Uh, he was on The Secret and stuff like that. And I, I, I heard him speak multiple times. And when I heard him speak the first time, I got glimpses of seeing me there. And I was like, man, that is somebody who I want to be like. I want to learn how he learns. He studies. He knows his stuff. He has a, a very logical process to something that's very abstract and spiritual based um, in, in some ways. And he's just very an intelligent man. And I was just like, I, I want to have a reach like him. And he had a vision. He said, my vision is to help serve a billion people in this world, to speak to a billion people. And I was like, damn, a billion people. I'll be happy with a million. But then I was like, wow. that's too small of a vision. So when I started to look at my life then, and you know, it's kind of, you get caught up in things and then you start going back and it was like, what really is important to me? And so I could have continued the Cairo side, but I was like, I, I really want to get into coaching. I just love, I mean, I transform lives when it comes to health, you know, the patient's choice. And then it's, I'm just the guidance to them, but there was only so much. And it was like, when I started to do a little bit of the coaching, I started to see, like I had clients who were um, during COVID, their whole business was shut down. Like that was it. They, they had no business. They had, they were locked. They couldn't practice. They couldn't do their business in Illinois. And so they had to reinvent themselves. And it was one of those things where to be able to help influence them and, you know, utilize different laws and how to help shift their focus and leverage their mind and reframe things and all this stuff. You know, they look back now and they're like two books here. Uh, you know, I started a membership course. I have an online course. This is going on here. I can go traveling where I want now. And that's one of my clients that was there at the time. That was so much more mon monumental for me. And I was like, man, that's amazing. How can I continue doing more of that? Yeah, and, that's pretty cool. uh, and then they have the reach to, to create other things to have, a larger impact. I mean, I want to, my main vision and my main purpose in life is to uh, just raise the consciousness of individuals I work with so that they can, uh, you know, really remember the greatness of who they really are, you know? And, and so that's like my main purpose of everything and why I do what I do. And it's like, I was doing that in, in some ways in my own office, but it wasn't at the lat magnitude of what I wanted to do. And so that, that was always pressing at me in some way, shape or form. And it, it took me, you know, that, that's what kind of motivated us to, to, to make that choice. And thankfully, uh, I had a wife who was willing to and wanting to uh, do it also. That's cool. So I got a lot of questions now. Um, how, how did you train yourself or how, who trained you? How did you learn what you currently are teaching and helping other people understand? Like what, what methods did you go through or experiences did you go through to be able to gain that knowledge to be able to coach others? So, you know, when I was young, um, I was 12 years old. I remember talking to my mom and I said, 
uh, one day out of the blue, it was, it was nothing magical or anything. I just remember having a conversation and I just looked at her and said, I'm going to figure out this thing called life. Now it's a tall order for a 12 year old. And she just looked at me and I was just like, you know, it was one of those things. And I think the reason why I had such that drive for that was because I didn't like the life I had leading up to where I was. Um, had a lot of emotional stuff. I mean, a lot of my childhood stuff with that. And, you know, one of the things I used to get really bothered down by is I had a little self-worth issue. And so seeing like other people who had like, like cousins of mine who had like every video game and every toy and every this, and I couldn't have any of that. I could barely afford to get this or one little thing or one thing here. And that would annoy me. And I was always like, man, why, why can't I have that? Why do I, why am I here? You know, why am I stuck here? So I felt like that, that, that aspect of it to where I was, uh, uh, like a resistance. I had no control. I felt helpless. Yeah, yeah. And so, so with that feeling, and it wasn't just one thing, there was multiple times that showed up in my life. Um, but there came a point where <clears throat> I wasn't until, um, the, the, the interesting part of getting into the mind and understanding and telling is was I saw financial hardship throughout my whole life, my family, from my society, the, the, the town we grew up in, blue collar family, all that stuff. And I saw how the arguments of finances showed up. I saw how, you know, everyone will talk about money or if someone lost money up and just the, the heavy weight and the attachment to that. And I always remember, I didn't say this in my head. I didn't say this, but I, as I look back at my life, I know that's what motivated me where I didn't want to have that life. I didn't want to go through those experiences. I did whatever it was going to be. I didn't want to be that, but I also wanted the approval of my parents. So I know my dad, my parents were big about, you know, having me go to go, education of some form. And um, so I was like, well, I want to, you know, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have any, I didn't have any ideas of becoming a chiropractor. I thought of like being a lawyer and a chef and an accountant and all these other things. But, uh, but when I, when it became to chiropractic, then when I went to school, I studied a lot of other things on top of just chiropractic. I was studying energy medicine. I was studying uh, universal laws. I was studying spiritual truths. And I wanted to understand the truth of life. So because I grew up Roman Italian Catholic, I, I read the Bible. I studied all that stuff for 18 years. Uh, my life, first 18 years of my life. Well, I don't know if I did that for the first like four or five, but um, you get the point. Yeah. But long story short, um, but then I, I, when I ventured off away to Arizona State for a little bit, I started studying, you know, I was like, okay, I, I, now I can start challenging this stuff in a way where I can, I'm on my own learning. I don't have to yeah. be held by an authority or telling me somebody. So right. I started studying Hinduism and Buddhism and, you know, different uh, Tao Buddhist and uh, many different types of and Taoism and just wanted to understand deeper truths of life. So I've always, in the back of my mind, I've always been seeking for truth. And I still, to this day, I want to know the, the deepest truth that I can about life as much as I can. But the reason why I kind of made that shift to get into, want to get into coaching was, is that I studied and learned these principles so that I can create a life for myself. That's what I wanted to do for me. I wanted to be able to be financially set. I wanted to be successful in the way at the time I was doing it for what people thought was successful. And like I said, for the first five years, that's what I did in my business. But then when I made the huge change in my business, when I said I made a change, I went from looking at my office and seeing the patients I had and what kind of patients I had. And it was nothing against them. It was me and what I was allowing that allowed for that. So some patients wouldn't be consistent with care. Some will just come in for pain and this kind of stuff. That's not what my vision of what I wanted to do. And so literally what we did is from the year we had our pinnacle peak, we retook a 40% hit financially. It was by choice. We started letting go of patients that just didn't fit the office. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we started to shift gears on what we wanted to do. But the difference was, is I applied everything I knew. I stopped learning stuff like I used to read 80 to 120 books a year. I used to listen to tons of podcasts. If I wouldn't, I would never listen to music. It was always a podcast, a motivational speech. I was always downloading stuff. And I got to a point where I'm like, I'm done with this. I want to apply what I know. And then I'm just going to go with what I know. And that's going to be the end of it. And uh, I had a coach who helped guide me in some ways, but it was one of those things where I applied everything I, I knew. And all of a sudden I was working less. I actually took a 50% less. I was working in my office and I was making more. Um, you know, I was able to launch a podcast, write a book and, and, and start a coaching business uh, on top of it. Other passions I enjoyed. Started taking up board working. And I started to enjoy more of life and I was more fulfilled. I was happy. And I was like, man, I can do this. And then I started, I remember in some meditations, I was like, it's something that was telling me, listen to the self-help again and see what they say. So I started listening to them and I started listening to personal development again and, and just listening to the messages. And I was like, this is not congruent with nature. This is not congruent with how spirituality yeah. is or the universe works or even the laws of the body. Like, you know, you got to grind, you got to hustle, there's sweat equity, you got to do this, you got to, and I was like, yeah, but that, that's not, the, I, th I think what they're sharing and what the messages are coming to say, and then what truth, like how the body does things, it does, that, that doesn't line up. 
And so I was like, you know what? I started talking to entrepreneurs a little bit just to get ideas and you would hear the same message. And I'm just like, this is not, I, I need to come out with coaching in some way. So I talked to my wife one day and we were like, Hey, you know what? I'm going I'm to try this out. I'm going to do group coaching. That's eventually what I started with. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, a couple months later, it started picking up and I had a patient who helped out with it. She, she was a coach for, and she worked with a lot of other coaches and, Next, you know, I'm doing coaching for them. And the next, then the, everything just started to blossom, right? Every, when you're in the right place at the right time, everything's just going to do what it's supposed to. And, uh, but that's, that's the whole backstory of why I chose um, to, to get into coaching because I saw what it did for me when I got to choose. You got to say, I studied the best chiropractors who told me what success was. What was it to be a family wellness chiropractor? What was I supposed to do? I followed everything they told me. And I got to success, but I was burned out every four to six months. I was uh, having health issues where sometimes my back would go out and it sometimes it would be detrimental. Sometimes it would just be for a short period of time. Uh, my relationship could have been better. Not like we had relationship issues, but it could have been way better. Uh, you know, and my mindset could have been better and sharper. I could have been less stressed. So it took a point from being getting that financial success, but then having all this other stuff to where all of a sudden I'm like, you know what, forget it. I'm not even going to focus on financial success. I'm going to focus on what matters most to me, what's important to me, what I value and what, what I want to, what's my message for chiropractic, how I define chiropractic. I like, I mean, I revamped everything that I did and we got that success, but it was all the other things that got improved too. I have the best relationship I have ever had. Every day is a better relationship with my wife. Uh, my health isn't the best it's ever been. And, you know, and it's, it's my mindset is sharper than ever. Uh, and I don't mean that from just a sharpness and a cutie standpoint. I mean, I can take on anything. I just took a huge move. So like we moved from Chicago to Knoxville, closed the business. My wife was pregnant. My wife got pregnant immediately once we made that choice. So our baby's almost due here on this recording in a couple of weeks. And, you know, you look at all those things and it's like, that's a lot of things going on here. And we moved away from all our family and friends. And, but it's like, I got my wife, we're good. I, I have a vision of where we're moving forth and so forth. So um, yeah, that's the whole, uh, that's the, that's the backstory that kind of inspired me to get into coaching and, and, and wanting to make the shift because I just didn't like seeing how it's been done. And there's a whole different way of doing things um, that not saying my way is better or, or anything like that. It's just, there's, there's, you know, there's Newtonian physics. That's how I kind of explain it. There's Newtonian physics, which is, yeah, you got to grind, you got to hustle, you got to put the sweat out, you got to do the hard work, you got to bust your behind for 80 hours a week. And eventually you're going to, you know, if you do that, you'll get there faster than someone who does it at 40. That's Newtonian physics. That's hundred percent factual. There is nothing wrong with that. They've been teaching that since the forties and fifties. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's something called quantum physics and quantum physics is a whole different world to where it's like less is more. All right. The so Vic, yes, I got to interrupt here. You have an incredibly powerful and long winded elevator speech. You literally <laughs> just rattled out like a thousand words a minute. It was insane. And it actually is I inspiring. Talk very fast. I love listening <laughs> to you. I seriously think that was a great like I think we all know who Vic is now, but I have so many questions. What? OK, it sounds like to me if I were to interpret what you went through you gained a better appreciation of your consciousness and you connected with that from a possibility and a potential perspective aligned with your overall skill set. And so that's my interpretation. And I think you're doing more of you're aligning your, um, your talent and skills into an area that can have the most impact in people's lives. And I think it's dancing around consciousness what is consciousness? Where does it come from? <laughs> that's like the age old question, isn't it? <laughs> hey, that's why I'm well, asking it. We are. I mean, we, if you look at consciousness, it's one of those things where it's, it's the essence of who we really are. It's the consciousness or the soul or whatever you like to call it is what, you know, is the difference between my, my a physical body being alive versus one that isn't. And it's something that's self learning. It's learning from observing, right? Um, so like you asked, sometimes people ask the question, like, who's the observer of the observer, right? Yeah. If you think of your mind for a second, you have someone who observes things, you, you're looking, you're listening, you're observing me right at that point. But then who's the person behind that? Because there's someone else too there. And that's like your consciousness. That's the essence of who you are. And it's, it's something that is eternal. It's something that is always self learning. There is no it's infinite. It's, it's something that can uh, we are just starting to understand how to utilize consciousness? We understand how consciousness can manipulate and change matter. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'm answering it a little bit because it, it, it's think a you deep are. question. 
Oh, it's a very you know, deep question. I figured I might as well jump into the deep end with you. But then one of the things it. that I think you talk about is darkness and how darkness can be an ally. Explain that. What is so because you kind of hinted at what's behind our it, I look at it as what's behind your eyes. You're you're consciously looking through your eyes and you're observing and taking in input. But what is assessing that holistically in your being behind that? But what is the darkness component? Is it like meditation? Is it closing your eyes and turning off the, you know, inputs, visual inputs so that you can focus on that consciousness? What is it? So darkness is every obstacle challenge. It's the dark night of the soul. It's the things that we fear, the things that we face in this life that actually give us the greatest triumph and the greatest learning and the greatest wisdom and growth. So mm. when you, a lot of times we, we try not to go. So when you have something that's very deep or something that affects you and it's uncomfortable, uh, the first reaction you're going to get in your nervous system is resistance. You're going to fight it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and you're, and some people are good at, you know, they'll feel that and then they let it go. But you want to understand when, when I say the darkness is your greatest ally or it's, it, it's, it's the, the thing that's going to give you the greatest teaching that you need to grow and expand. Because when you really realize that you have light within you, you consciousness, light, you can call it, we can, we can exchange those terms. And it's one of those things that you don't realize what you're really made of and what you have really within you until you go into the darkness, because we are literally, it's been proven by science, our bodies actually project light out. We can't see it with our eyes, but it does do that. And so would you say a candle is very, is it more powerful if we have it in a room that's well lit and you can see the amplitude of how much that can light up a room or when it's in a pitch black, dark room, how much well, can that ladder. candle? Ladder, I think the right? ladder because it's, it's actually displacing darkness. And when you already have light and there's an absence of darkness and you put more light in it, it minimizes you. You can't perceive the true effect and power of that until you get into a place where there is no other light and it has the full capability of displacing darkness. Yes, sir. And so, and I love how you take displacing darkness because it's one of those things where we have to go into darkness to truly see our light. And so think about it as a seed, the seed, when you plant it, it has to go into darkness and then it can, it, it seeks its way to the light. You know, everything, you, when you look at, we come into this world, we're in darkness and then we have to come to the light. We're always doing that process. And for us, like, and this was my experience, I had to, I tried to logically, intellectually try to learn things to prevent darkness so I didn't have to go there. And then it took a point <laughs> in my life to, try, like, and imagine, you can, I'm studying as much as I can to try to prevent, and things were still showing up and I was getting very stressed about it. But then there came a point in my life, and again, this, this all happened around that first, after the five years where I literally was just like, I'm going to let, I'm going to go into the darkness. So I would, I would, I would, you know, I would say you have to go into it. And that means it's like, you don't fear it. You don't, if it's uncomfortable, be uncomfortable in that moment. It is okay to be uncomfortable, but why are you uncomfortable? You want to, this is where you get to learn about yourself. This is when you're actually learning how you want to get strength and growth. When you have a vision or a goal of what you want to achieve, you're not just going to walk up to it. You have to go through the darkness because you got to mold and train yourself. This is kind of like how the whole, you know, uh, this whole thing I call it, you know, universe, this earth university is all about is we, we, we learn through this. This is part of the curriculum. And so when we can see darkness as our greatest ally and the darkness is always good, there's nothing bad. It may seem like it's bad, especially sometimes circumstances that show up in our life. But it, when you really look at it from the hindsight, you look at the rear view mirror, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, man, that was the most powerful thing ever. And I mean, I've talked to people where they've had some bad, very detrimental traumas, physical trauma, sexual traumas, you name it. And still to this day, I always, I'll, I'll make sure I could feel like it's good, but I'll ask the question at the end, what you went through, was that a blessing? And I still, to this day, have not gotten a no. Everyone's mm -hmm. always said yes. So okay. it's, it's so looking at that. How do, how do you change your mindset so that you're more receptive to embracing those dark times in your life as a growth opportunity and something that will make you wiser on the other end? How do you embrace that mindset? How do you shift your mindset? So you have to see things from a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset, right? How do you Once you understand that? that. So how to shift and see, it's all perspective at the end of the day. Right. You can do things like I, some things I train and teach about is like codes. You have to have a belief or a code system that just says like for me, all things in life are always for the greater good. It's always going to benefit me in some way, shape or form. It doesn't matter what shows up in my life. I can go through any hardship. It's going to benefit me for the greater good. Now you may say, well, what about this or that? 
I'm saying for me, I already know 100% within. I am 100% confident, congruent. That is my code that I live by. So what happens when I say that? Once I have that belief, my perspective is going to look for the good. When something shows up in my life, whatever it may be, I have things that show up all, all the time where all of a sudden I'll look at that and say, okay, great. First thing I ask is, where's the good in this that's going to come from this? Where, how, you know, I'm not saying how, it's just where is that, where, where how, how can I see this as good? What is this going to mean for me? What do I want to get out of this? How do I want to share the story of this? Because we are spiritual alchemists. We can change the energy of things. Remember, good and bad is just an opinion of someone who's putting a certain perspective on it, right? And so when we look and shift your perspective, you just have to see it in a different light. You have to see it in a different way. And if you can do that, you've already moved, you've already changed 50% of that. And then it just becomes a habit. You have to train your neurology to do that because you're not conditioned that way. Especially if you don't really, like if something happens, like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Because when we get in a fixed mindset, when something negative happens, we think it's going to be there forever. You got to know all storms pass. And every yeah. storm that passes, there's beautiful sunshine that comes after that. The it, calm always happens after the storm, right? Absolutely. And honestly, I mean, I have five kids, right? And whenever they go through challenges and issues that are stressful and, um, you know, hard to understand, I kind of tell them something similar, right? Like, hey, look, it's about a, a matter of opinion. You, this is not going to last. And you got to change your mentality, your mindset about it. And then it works for like a day, right? And then the next day or the day after that, they're back to their old way of thinking where it's like, no, I can't embrace that dark room. No, that's a horrible thing. I hate it. You know, I hate this. Um, how do you consistently remind yourself to and also shift your mindset so that it develops into a habit? Yeah, so this is where you have to do, there's two things, right? So we have to look at the subconscious mind because that's kind of what you're tapping into, right? You can think about it, you feel good. Next day, bam, it's right back where it was. Right. And a lot of times people do this where it could be in money, relationships, you name it. And subconscious mind dictates 95% of our life. So what you want to do is you got to go, you got to get out of the intellect because you cannot, I mean, you can, don't get me wrong. There, you can work from the conscious to the subconscious. There are ways of doing that. But again, we're going to talk about Newtonian and quantum physics. Newtonian is force, 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 force. Eventually you'll grasp it. Quantum is don't need the force. We'll step into the power. Why don't we just go and work on how the brain was working back then in a way. And that's feelings and images, right? Because that's what happens is, is when you were a kid, the way you were programming your subconscious is you saw an image, your brain took a snapshot of an image of something. It put a feeling behind it and that became a belief and that yeah. codes your life. Right. So what I teach and what I share and how to shift gears is you got to really focus on your vibe. And what I mean by vibe is your emotion, you're feeling good. And you got to start training yourself to really get into a good vibe. And this can go into uh, many different specifics. It can be financial wealth. It can be relationships. It can be health. It can be a lot of these different things. And it's, it's just seeing yourself and what you choose to experience. A lot of times people, not only do we have the subconscious playing a role in things, we also carry baggage and baggage is past experiences. We're letting dictate our future experiences. Yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's a, that's a form of self-sabotage. And so then you have to look at, okay, well, what do we do then to do that? So the feeling side is one, right? We got to tap into these good vibes. This is, this relates to the law of attraction. This relates to the law of vibration. We're starting to raise our vibe. It's kind of like shaking off the, the lower vibe stuff, or you can say the darkness or um, I'll just go with those two, but so yeah. you got, you got that aspect of it. But then you have to see, so this is where you got to use imagery, visualization or, or imagination, because you got to see yourself in the essence of what you want to be. Because if you can't see it in your mind, you'll never get there. That's just a spiritual truth. And then quantum physics backs that up also. So you have to see what it is that you want. So if it's like, hey, you know, I want to get out, I want to be able to see the darkness as good. Okay, well, let's see the darkness as good. What comes from that? Start using things that mean something to you. Because a lot of my work is individual stuff. So I can share stuff what I do. I can share stuff here. But you got to find what works for you. What is an imagery that gives you, makes you, helps you feel good? And you got yeah. what's feeling good, right? Now we have to define feeling good because a lot of times people go, well, what's feeling good? I don't know. Because a lot of us are disconnected from our bodies. We well, don't use you, our intuition. Yeah. They're totally disconnected and they're engaged and connected into social media and they're outsourcing their imagery and their creativity of what the possibilities are. And they're living vicariously, but constantly beating themselves up through social media images. Totally. And so that's, that's the, that's one of the negatives of social media because it isn't imagery, it's videos and imagery and stuff like right. that. And you go to Instagram, that's all imagery. And it's, so you get TikTok, it's all video. So 
look at the conditioning and the programming that happens from there. And you got to get away from the intellect. This is what I, I teach a lot of people is like, and this is a struggle for a lot, even for my clients, it's a struggle because they're so intellect strong. We all are intellect strong in many ways, but we've lost the art of feeling and being here. And we don't use this body as it's, it's the most amazing technology. Um, mm -hmm. I always tell people, I was just having a conversation this morning with our midwife. We had an appointment and I was telling her like, when I studied embryology, I had the deepest respect for nature, the universe, the body and everything. Because when you see what a baby does in another human being and how everything shifts and change and how it supports it, how it calibrates and all this stuff, it is so, fa I mean, you just, there's just, it just blows your mind. So your body is yeah. one of the most advanced technical systems out there. And yet we don't, we don't connect to this. And there's something called feelings. It's the right part of your brain. And here's the difference between left and right brain. I talk about this in my second book, uh, Walk in the Dark. And that is all about your left brain computes information everywhere between seven bits of information, uh, plus or minus two every second, right? Not a lot. It, it computes some, but not a lot. Your right side of the brain is about a million something per every second. You can see how much there's a difference in computing power. Mm -hmm. So if we go intellectually, we only can get so much information, only can do so much at a short period of time. But if we get away from the intellect, go into the right brain, now, all of a sudden, we can access more, even though we, we can't comprehend it. You know, we may not be able to put words. You ever have a feeling in life where you're like, man, I know I, or I, I know what you're saying. I just can't put a word to it. Or, man, I feel this, but I can't put a word to it. That, yeah. that's, that's stuff that's beyond logic. That's, that's beyond language. This is all higher, different, different aspects of things of life. And so when you get into this feeling and use the feelings, now, like I said, you're, going, you're, you're tapping into deeper resources and stuff that's actually more accurate for you. See, my whole purpose and vision is life. And what I teach, this is one of the reasons why I also became a coach was I got tired of people being told what to think instead of how to think. Well, we've been told what to think our whole life. I mean, that's the entire society around us. So you go to that's the you go to the school system, you're told what to think. You go to work, you're told what to think. You go to church, you're told what to think. I mean, you're constantly being told how to think and even programming, right? Um, that's that's the problem with our society and our world around us is, is we are constantly being told how to act, behave, where we are allowed to do certain things, can't do certain things, but also think. And that is the biggest issue, I think, is we oh, it's don't massive. think. Yeah. Now, okay, I have another question for you. So you had the Decoding the Matrix first, right? That's my third book. Third book. What was your second one? A Walk in the Dark. And what's your first one? Re rediscover Your Greatness. Okay. The matrix is the one that this quote came from, but you said, I started to realize over time, there is an energy that holds huma humanity, yeah, humanity back. It is the thing that doesn't allow humans to truly find their potential, realize who they are and allow them to actualize their dreams. What is this energy that's holding people back? Because I I'm curious what your perspective is on this. Maybe you hinted on it, but what is this energy in this force holding us back? So, and it's nothing evil, right? It sounds evil when I say that, right? But in all reality, that's the matrix and what I call the matrix. Um, the other term for a matrix is the human collective consciousness. This is, is this, that term means you're taking every single human being and you're averaging out their most pressing thought and their emotions, what they focus on the most, right? So let's say that's a, that's a certain number. If we average all them out, this becomes the human experience overall. So there's the human experience, but then we have sub matrices, which are like, North America, South America, Africa, Australia. And then there's a matrix under that, sub matrix under that, which is going to be then like the states versus the countries and stuff. And then we get the towns and you can see how it goes all the way down. The smallest, per the smallest part of the matrix is you. But what traps us and holds us is that there's, there's something called the, the lobster effect. Some people call it a crab effect, but I, I, I heard this as the lobster effect. And if you have three lobsters in a tank, for some weird reason, I do not know. If someone's out there, I always tell people, if you know what the answer is, please let me know because I do not know why this happens. But what will happen is, it's a phenomenon, that if there's three lobsters and one of them says, forget this tank life, I'm done. I want to see what's on the other side of that wall. It starts to climb up the wall. The other two lobsters will go and grab it and pull it back into the tank. Why they do that, have no clue. But it's called the lobster effect. And there's other, there's other, uh, um, um, crab laws. I heard it was the, the crab effect. Yeah. The crab effect. I've heard the crab effect. I heard it as the lobster effect. Yeah. I'm like, it's still shellfish, right? I think <laughs> <laughs> it's seafood. That's shellfish. It's, seafood. <laughs> it, it's in the same arena, you know, whatever, whatever it's called. Uh, but it, it's a phenomenon that happens, but it's interesting because 
you can look at, there's something called, uh, there's a metronome. And for all the listeners, you can Google metronome on YouTube and you can see this thing. And what they do is, is they'll set these, there'll be like 50 or 60 or hundred or 200, doesn't matter the number. And they all beat at a different noise, right? So they're all just these swinging things that make a noise. And what will happen is they all off beat. You're just like, oh, this is very annoying. But we don't understand this. I forgot the term. I wrote it in my book. I should remember. I should have that memorized. Uh, spontaneous uh, synchronization, I think it's. Yeah, spontaneous synchronization. What happens is it's around a minute to 45 seconds to a minute and 55 seconds. They've done this study so many times. And it's, it's roughly around that time frame. They all go to sync. For how They'll long? all sync. They're all out of sync. And they go to sync on the road. Indefinitely? No- like, or they just yeah, sync for a just short sync. time period? No, they'll sync and they'll just stay like that. And they'll just keep going and going and sync. It was a phenomenon that happened. They've done this many different times with different things. I've seen so many different studies on it. And it's the same effect. And they're just like, they call it spontaneous synchronization. So when you got that happening, we talked about the lobster, or the crab effect. Then there's also like, when it comes to vibrations, the most pro- prominent vibration you will always vibrate towards unless you're consciously pushing yourself out of it. So what the matrix does or the human collective consciousness, if you're not aware, will influence you. And when it influences you, it'll pull you into the average. This is when we become mediocre. This is when you hear a phrase, if you don't take control of the day, the day takes control of you. Or I don't know who said it. I think it was Ben Franklin. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. These, are, those, those are, these are all related phrases to talking about. I don't know if they're specifically talking about that, but they're related to this because it's one of those things where you're going to always have something pulling you back. In my first book, I called it the machine. I'm like, there's this machine that's out there. Uh, and then later on, I evolved to where I'm like, it's the matrix. And so it's always there and it's always going to influence in every shape, shape, shape and way of our life. Um, and it's up to us to always raise our vibe and be outside of that. And I then, honestly, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I honestly look at that Vic as like a mediocrity uh, drumbeat that it, it puts people into a complacency mindset, a self limiting or uh, limiting mindset that. Uh, people get comfortable with. And so when someone goes outside of those frequencies or beats, it stands out and they go and attack it. They don't like it. And uh, you see that a lot. I mean, how many times do you, okay, let's say you're, uh, let's say you're Catholic and all your friends are Catholic and you go and post something that's pro like Buddhism or something on Facebook, you're going to get a lot of Catholic people to jump down your throat. But if all of your friends are non-denominational and mixed bag, you may get like no one, right? And so there's like, there's also, I think a lot of weird variations of this effect happening in society today um, around us all the time. And we don't really pick up on it. Oh, you're hitting that on, man. It's, and as I talk about this in the book, because you, you, what, what do we do when someone does step out of the matrix? We discredit, we humiliate, and we, 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 we bash them, right? And I mean, I saw that in my own realm with COVID and, and just look at COVID. I use COVID as an example because COVID was so polarized in so many ways. You could not share any research that went against what the narrative was. If you did, yep. uh, there's people, doctors that lost their license because of that. There was humiliation like crazy. People would bash and name you yeah. and label you. And I'm not saying what they're saying. I, I, I had this happen to me. I was using yeah. prestige- families attack families. Yep prestigious research, like Lancet studies. I mean, this is the one of the oldest with Oxford. I mean, I was using stuff that I was like, okay, no one can really create an argument. This is like one of the most prestigious long-term publishing journals coming out with research. And yet, nope, still had it happen. And I was just like, this is crazy. All I want to do is just help them see something different and make a choice for themselves. That's all my purpose was. And it got to a point where I'm like, all right, forget this. I don't want to, I'm tired of this. I'm trying to yeah. help. And is not being seen, but that was just COVID. There's so many times we do this Democrat or Republican, right? And I shared yeah. this in my book in Decoding Matrix. I'm like, I can say Donald Trump or Joe Biden. You're gonna have feelings one way or the other. It's polarized. No one, yeah. I, I always, I joke with people. You don't even know the person. And yeah, we have no. this polarization against them. Oh, you know, it's but crazy. look how they, I'm like, who cares? At yeah. the end of the day, it's like, you don't know the person. Well, I well, know what they stand for in their policies. Yeah, but you're- Anyway, you're, I digress. You're, you're head on because you're only basing your- 
uh, opinion of that person based upon someone else's opinion that has been through the bias filter. And then it's communicated to you in such a way that you resonate to it or have history historically defaulted to those sources and they hit your emotions the right way. And therefore it's your opinion and you haven't done your own independent research. You basically form your own opinion based upon someone else's bias filters that has been given to you. Therefore they've, they've got control of your brain. And this is interesting Vic, because I think this is the biggest problem in our world today. And I think you, they're kind of coinciding to each other, but that is the, uh, what is it? The third part of your brain that has the fear. Uh, no, it's the fear inducing fight, flight, and freeze part of your brain, right? Yep. This scientifically is proven to uh, be activated through fear or divis divisiveness. Um, it promotes divisiveness and argumentation and it prevents your pineal gland or fourth part of your brain from being activated, which I think is your higher conscious, your consciousness or the ability to uh, uh, interpret vibration and frequency and energies at different levels than you ever could if you're stuck in the third part of your brain in a constant whatever fear induced numbness. And that is the issue because all media does it all politicians do it. They play each other off, you know, they play the opponent off of themselves and you're being activated and they're promoting this part of your brain and activating it. And that's kind of what we're seeing in everything in life today. So if you think, where oh, do ahead. people have the chance to break away from that and to think independently, objectively, and form their own independent opinion using something as amazing as the pineal gland? Yeah, it's it's uh, just to share on that fear thing. There were studies that came out that they actually had studies to prove that when you get people in a fear state, which is your primate, your reptilian part of your brain, that you become a primate, in other words. Um, and what happens is they they know for a fact if they can get you in that part of your brain, they can control behaviors 100%. And you can just look at what society was doing when, yeah. when, when it came to COVID or other things in life, right? So how do we break away from all this though? Well, you know, when we go into that part of our brain that's the reptilian, we shut off the prefrontal cortex. This is your part of your brain that makes you human. There's no other species in the world that can do that has that part of the brain besides a dolphin. Funny how we're best friends with each other. Um, but one of the things about the prefrontal cortex is your executive functioning center. This is the part of the brain that allows you to make choices, impulse control. It helps you to make a choice and see the future, how that's going to play out. It has you do some deductive thinking and all these other processes that's like our higher consciousness level. Now you're talking about pineal gland. That's a whole other level. Uh, that takes you into the spiritual realms. That's a gateway to the spiritual realms. Um, that's more of the essence of who we really are and tapping into that. But we can get into these kind of things. We can turn off that reptilian brain and shift gears. You can do things in short term and there's long term. The first one I'm going to recommend that's going to do the long term and it also helps. It helps in the short term, but it's really the long term. It's not known well, but it's chiropractic care. That's what chiropractors work on all day. When you, get a, when you get a specific adjustment, what we're really doing is rewiring the brain back to the prefrontal cortex so we can elevate your consciousness level so you can, you can adapt better to your environment in all aspects possible. Um, but for those who are looking, you know, there's other things you can do too, though. So chiropractic is the main one that I, I always recommend. I always tell people chiropractic saved my life uh, in so many ways because I was an ADHD kid. I talk fast. You can tell I, I talk a little faster. Than wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Vic. Hold on. You have adult ADD? No, 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 I, no, no. I, I, I used to, I, I never was diagnosed it, ADHD as a kid. Okay. All right, but, but when I went to chiropractic school and I looked back, I was like, holy cow, I was an ADHD kid that was misdiagnosed. <laughs> okay. So you always have it. You have ADD then. I have ADD. And that's funny because I think it's actually a huge gift. I think it is just like a lot of things in life. It is a blessing that if harnessed correctly is a superpower. And like no one else can do that. You could give me a task and I can figure it out in a split second where other people, it would take them two hours to go, what's the ask again? I don't get it. I just, it's a talent. It's a skill. Well, we also know like people who have ADHD, ADHD, ADD, ADHD is that they have higher, faster, they have higher IQs, uh, amazing at sports, uh, especially multiple sports for yeah. the most part. Uh, it's because we can compute and handle things. Um, and our computing power is a lot faster. So we can, you know, it's part of the higher IQ. It doesn't mean that you're smarter. It just means that you can, like you said, I can do something that I can get done really quick, but then yet 
someone else might take two hours. And that's how I am. Right. My, my wife will always be like, how can you get something done so quick? I'm like, I'm efficient. But how, I just don't understand. And I'm like, nah, just what I, I grew you up. can't explain it. That's, yeah. I, it's just how I do things. Um, but yeah, but that's how, that's where I was at. But I had all the negatives with the ADHD. So like when I used to work with kids who had ADHD and stuff, I always tell the parents, I'm like, or the mom, most time those moms, I just be like, listen, it's a gift. It's amazing to have. The thing, what I'm going to do is my job and my role is to keep the gifts and the power, the strengths of it all. And let's just minimize and let's, I'm not going to say we're going to remove, but we're going to minimize the negative effects of this and what it does to the nervous system, anxiousness and anxiety and all that stuff that comes with that. We're going to, we're going to minimize this as we help improve the brain to adapt better. And it's fascinating because their grades will get better. Uh, even though they're smart kids, they just get bored because it's, they, they can't keep up. The teachers can't keep up. That was me. I was bored in school because the teachers, what they were sharing, I, I, it was too slow. I can't listen to audio or video. Like if I listen to a video, it has to be two X or more. When they started to give those options, I was like, thank the Lord. I can listen to things more. And, uh, somebody put on a post on Facebook, like that's because of instant gratification. I'm like, that may be true for other people. That is not true for me. I can listen at that speed and comprehend. <laughs> so, uh, by digress. So the chiropractic side is one, but the other thing you can do, there's simple things you can do. Breath work is something that shuts off the, the fight or flight or freeze mod, mode of the nervous system. It will actually alter that part and get you more into a balanced state. So it doesn't have to be like a Wim Hof or a Soma breath or, you know, uh, uh, pranayamas or anything. It, it's just some form of breath work. Now uh, the research yeah. shows that, uh, a minimum of six deep breaths, deep breaths at, uh, just the deepest breath in you can through your nose. And then you just breathe out as long as you can out through your mouth, pause on the top and bottom. Um, that, that six times will change your neurology and calm it down. So there's, there's, there's ways we can do that. I mean, meditation is my favorite. Uh, the only problem with meditation is uh, we are so our attention spans are getting less and less, which means our focusing power gets less and less. So it becomes more difficult to adapt to meditation. Uh, but if you have the willpower, I always tell people meditate, you know, do the same meditation for 90 days. By the time you get to that 90th day, you'll have it, you'll have it down to where you can finally start to get that peace, a little bit of bliss, uh, and that aspect of it to where you can really tap into yourself and like ignore the noise, just to, not even ignore, just shut it all off and just really connect well, with you and find what truth is. That's I, I want to throw in another one. Just turn off, turn off the noise, eliminate distractions and unnecessary stressors, and learn to say no. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's just so much, cause think about it. how much are we in, in denu in denu in how much are we mm -hmm. bombarded with so much information, right? We have a smartphone that's so amazing, but yet how many notifications are we paying attention to? Or how many times are we checking just unconsciously checking Facebook or Instagram or email? And it, it's one of those things where uh, we are literally, our brains are not designed to do that. Our brains are not designed to be on all the time, even though they function all the time. Um, we we're not designed to be always on, like we need to disconnect yeah. And, and, and I, and, and all aspects from, you know, like one of my things my, my wife and I are trying to do better at is um, like just after dinner, like no phone at all for the rest of the night. And it's just That's her and I idea. hanging out and doing some, yeah, yeah, it's something we've done before and we kind of got away from it since the move. And we're like, you know what, we're going to go back to that. No more yeah. phone, no phone at all after dinner till we go to bed. And then we want to incorporate that in our life now because we're going to, you know, we have a little daughter on the way and we don't want her to see that in her primitive, you know, early on years where she's yeah. absorbing everything like a sponge. We're trying to do everything we can to be like, let's get it built in now. So that way, when that time comes, we're already in the habit of this and she can see that. And then our other kids can see that and we can show them like, no, what we're, we're, what we're trying to show them. Cause this is how kids adapt. And this is how they're, they see, you know, you see parents on the phone and I'm not bashing anybody that does this. So please don't take this as judgment. I'm just showing what the neurology and how they, they pick up on stuff. They'll just see like, wow, mom's when dad spends more time on phone than it is with me. And they can start to put images in their head and feelings with that to say phone's more important than me. Who knows what that does down the road. And so it's you, we want to incorporate and lead by example. And since we understand this stuff, we're like, Hey, we got to be really mindful. I'm going to mess things up. I'm not going to be perfect. I already know that, but it's like, it's kind of like, but I have control of certain things. I want to be as best as I can with what I can't control as much as I can. Totally. And you know, something else that helped me is turn off your notifications on your phone. Just look at it. Like every once in a while, like right here on this recording, I have all notifications off, you know, like I've got no, no distractions, no vibrations, no sound. And when I am done, I'll pick it up and see if a text came through. If not, everything else can wait until after dinner. Right? Like it's, you just got to learn how to not be so used to picking up your phone every few minutes. 
Um, that's that's it's huge. Like, it's like who's controlling your life? Because like for me, I know my phone's always on silent, and sometimes yeah. that's not a great thing because when you don't can't find your phone, uh, you can't call it because it's <laughs> yeah. not going to ring. It's not uh, I'm, I think there's like an app that you can do something to where it can do that. I, I have to go look now. Now I'm curious, but um, I just keep it always on silent. And yeah. you know, I tell people all the time, if you call me and I don't answer, just shoot me a text right after. Don't leave a voicemail. Just shoot me a text and I'll catch it. Cause if I go on my computer, my text messages are there. If I see something pop up, you know, if I start seeing the counter go up, then I'm like, okay, I got to check and see what's going on. So there's ways my, like my wife knows like how to get a hold of me if anything was emergency. Uh, but there's, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want my phone to control me in any way where it distracts me from my focus or distracts me from what I'm trying to do or create in some way, shape or form. Yeah. It's a good idea. I, I, so that leads me to my next question. You talk about flow state. Um, what, when did you first realize what flow state is and that you had experienced it? And then how do you get into flow state today? So there's two different ones that I experienced. I mean, they're the same thing. It's just, I experienced it in one form and then I experienced it in a different form. Sports is when I experienced it. Everybody knows that as the zone, right? You get into this zone. It's like you, uh, I'm, I was a big baseball guy. I played for about 25 years. And I remember there was times where I can get into a certain state and I would see things happen before they happened. Like I would know the pitcher is going to throw this pitch before they threw it. Don't ask me how I couldn't tell you, but I was in this, I was in a space within my body to where all of a sudden I'd just be like, I just felt like this is where it's going. This is what's coming. And then boom, I do that. Or if I'm in the outfield, I played outfield. Um, I will like shift my position for some reason. And I'm just really connected to what's going on and the energy of the, everything that's happening. And I'd be like, you know what? I just feel like I got to move here. And I'm like, my body, my energy will be like, my body will be wanting to run there. And I just be like, the pitch hasn't even happened yet. But then all of a sudden I'm just feeling and being in this place. And all of a sudden I go and like, it, it was just like instant. My coach would be like, how the hell did you get there? I'm like, I, <laughs> I go, I wish I could take credit for this. I can't. Um, so that was in sports, but then I started to tap into flow when it came to, um, there was times in my life I had this like intense peace that would just, you know, come when I just, heat would always bring that on for me. So like saunas and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was just like, I used to get it as a kid. Sometimes I get real angry and I, I didn't know how to express my emotions. Uh, didn't know how to use my words for it. And I didn't really have the support to help me with that. So sometimes I remember, I, I'll remember one summer I was at my grandma's house, got so mad at what was going on. I went into the car and it was like 90 something degrees and I just stayed in the car and I didn't want to be bothered. And I, I, but the heat actually brought the peace for me. It was weird. Hmm. So I remember weird. that feeling. Yeah, it's weird, it, it, but it was one of those things that just worked for me. And yeah. now it's funny. Now I look at my life now. Every day I meditate in an infrared sauna. Now I don't do it to sweat. I just turn it on for about five minutes, get up to like eighty, and then I go meditate. And it's like at one fifteen, one twenty when I'm done. But it's just, it's funny how I, you know, I'm just realizing this now. I'm like, yeah, I, really, I like the heat back then, and look what I do now. Uh, but it was meditation where I started to really get into this place called. Some people call it the gap zone, the flow state. Um, and just understanding what does that feel like for me? And it's like this intense peace or this, this centeredness. This is the only way I can explain it. I call it bliss and centeredness. And it's just this like really intense centered. And all of a sudden my thoughts will come in one at a time and I can see them and I can, I can execute in a certain way. And I started to do that where, um, I've gotten so much better at, it. I've been practicing this for 15 years. So I got to a point now where I can just get, I can prep my mind to get into a float state, to be in a functional state. But then there's also a flow state where I'm like, in an inner calm place to, for feeling or for insights or for information. Let's say I'm, I'm working on something, I'm struggling with something. Um, I can go into a state and just get really centered. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, it's another state of being like in flow. It's the same, same thing. It's happening in the brain from, from a sport perspective or in a meditative perspective. Wow. Uh, you totally described a lot of what I can relate to in my life too. And I think flow is something that, I wish I could like activate it when I want to, but you sounds like you've been able to identify what causes or helps to create a flow state like the sauna. I need to try a couple of those things um, myself and see what yeah. happens. You got to find what works for you. Cause like for me, what happens now, it's just a feeling I get into. That's yeah. how I wrote my book in under 24, uh, 20, you know, the, the actual writing of my book was under 24 hours. And I don't say that to brag, but I, I'm not that type of person. It, it's just I'm sharing this. It's a concept to share here. I was able to get into a flow state. I could write for an hour and a half, two hours, like just constantly pouring out of me. And then all of a sudden I just be like, okay, I'm done. I, I hit my peak for today. And I could go back and do more, but my body was like, Hey, you're good. Let's, let's take a break. Let's reset. 
We'll come back tomorrow or a few days from now and we'll, we'll crank away again. And that's also trusting the process. Like less is more, right? The law of least yeah. effort states what's the least amount of work to get the greatest gain. And this is what I learned. I can, I wrote a book in less than 24 hours, but it, that's, that's the law of least effort, right? How oh, yeah. man, you did it in 24 hours. It's like, but again, it was getting into a certain state and it's a feeling. This is why I teach feelings so much because you can try to do it intellectually. You have to find what works for you. Like I anchored myself to the, the, the sauna so that anytime I go in there, my brain, this is how beautiful your brain is. It will automatically start. No, when before, right when you walk in, we're going to be going into a meditation. So I already yeah. hacked and programmed yeah. that. You, you know, you just reminded me and I didn't mention this earlier, but I should have. I think I hacked something too. I got into EDM music at an early age. Uh, a friend of mine uh, named Nicholas George, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, but um, he was one that introduced me to trance music and like EDM music, but specifically trance, like Goa, Euro, progressive, you know, all types of different trance, right? All the good and stuff. Keep it up, brother. Yep. All the good stuff. And it's interesting. I can put that on and go drive five hours straight listening to the fastest trance music. And I will come up with 15 business concepts during that time. And, but you put on like a podcast, I focus on the conversation only. And I think about just what they are talking about. And yeah, I get engaged and I learn, but it's a different mindset. If that makes sense. When I'm into like, when I'm focusing on trance, like at work, when I, when I sit down and I have to do like a big project or a big report or something, and I don't want any distractions, I'll put on trance. And it helps me come up with the creative thoughts of whatever I'm working on or doing while trance is playing. I don't know why, but that works for me. It's just, there's a certain beat or a certain, I forgot what they call this. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 there's a vibration level to the certain music, but there's a, uh, oh, there's certain beats. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, that could come that way. And some of it is for individuals who can listen to that. Like, I know I'm exactly like you when I'm doing work and my, just my day-to-day -day stuff, I'll, depending on what mood I'm in, sometimes yeah. I, I want to listen to something, but, uh, but if I'm like really wanting to amp and like, I'm like in massive focus mode um, and I got to get a lot done in a short time, I'll put on some EDM and yeah. it, it, it'll just, all of a sudden it'll just, it'll just, I'm not even listening to the music. I'm not, I'm not even like consciously paying attention to Me it either. Yeah. But it, but it's, it's just the background noise of that beat perspective that can keep up with how my mind's pr pumping things out. Right. Right. And I'm like, yeah, let's crank, let's do this. I'm ready to go. And then after that, I'm done. Then I got to put on some soft chill music just to it's lo-fi. I love lo-fi music. Um, cause it's still got the beats, but it's just at a slower pace. And that just gets me into when I got a groove where I'm not in that focus, deep focus. I just got to grind out throughout the day. Um, and, and again, music does that. I mean, you can do music. You can like, they've done research on this heavy metal and rap music actually for working out is the best out there because that music, which is a low vibration, which is not normally a good thing. Um, it instills stress responses in the body, but that stress response pumps more blood into the muscles. And that's why it's the best music to listen to when it comes to lifting weights or doing something strenuous with a physical activity. Vic, I think you and I are going to partner on something. You just made me come up with a business <laughs> idea. And this is the problem, man. I always come up with some ideas and I'm always a problem solver and, and I'm, I'm a man with a million solutions. But this one I think is pretty cool. Instead of EDM, I think we should create ADM, attention deficit music. And I think we should hyper focus on the quality and the scientific study behind those beat sequences and frequencies and amplify that electronic beat frequency or harmonization and tailor it towards people that have attention deficit and helps them get into the zone quicker. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great concept to do. Cause I mean, there's, there's studies out there that they, there's, I forgot, I'm, I'm really bothered. Now. I can't remember the name of it. There is a, there's a certain neural beat pattern and it's different than like some people say, well, I can listen to alpha brainwave music and it's, that's going to do the work. Uh, and that's, this is different. There actually is neural circuitry processing and there's a certain pattern to it. That's why like some people can listen to, um, what is it? Shamanic drumming and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And it can put them in a state. Uh, or you can listen to the native, you know, the native American flute and that, you know, and, and you can, they can have like a little bit of a beat behind it. And those, we, we know that, I mean, look at African, look at, I say Africa because they use a lot of drums in what they do. And, uh, or I, I knew women who did drum circles and they talk about healing. So there's a lot to it, man. I mean, there's, a, there's a whole world. I haven't even delved into, I understand the science, but I haven't delved into the, 
um, the, the, the like, okay, let's, let's, let's play on that level and see what can amplify in this and that to that whole to a degree. Yeah. We're going to have to experiment together. I think you and I are onto something. ADM is what we're going to call it. ADM. I love it. That and works, by, man. By the time this is published, we're going to have to like go trademark the ADM acronym or something. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to go it. to like Apple Music and be like, we got a new genre coming. <laughs> um, They're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> attention deficit music. What's that? <laughs> Um, okay. So Vic, um, oh man, I had a really good question for you. Um, oh, oh yeah. Okay. So t I wanted to ask you about like mental health and, um, negativity and, you know, discouragement. Do you ever experience like discouraging thoughts days and does it come frequently? And if so, or if not, how do you shift from that negative kind of, you know, uh, discouraging mindsets into a more positive, productive mind space. Yeah. I mean, I get them. I'm human like anybody else. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's my own limiting beliefs that I have that I've, I've overcome them, but they, they evolve with you and they show up in different ways. As I always tell people, as your brain evolves and you evolve, um, your ego and the other, your inner critic evolves with you. It doesn't go away. So there's, they're always there in different forms. But um, one of the, the, the again, the, this is going to be kind of like, it might be a cliche in some ways, but for me, it depends on what it is. I usually, I don't have a day. I haven't had a day. I can't tell you how long it's been. Usually I'll catch something if I'm in like a bad vibe or uh, I just have some stinking thinking. Uh, there, it, it may last like an hour or two and I'll, I'll recorrect it pretty quick. And I have a long list of tools that I can use. Mm. A lot of times meditation sets the tone for me. Meditation is the one thing that works for me. I can come out of any meditation. Majority of the time, I'll be recentered, refocused, and I neutralized it. What all it did was is it took the charge off what I was focusing on and just shifted my focus to something else. Because yeah. I know for one thing I know about in my past and, my, and what I teach and, and all the science that supports this is we're spiritual alchemists. And what I mean by spiritual alchemists is that we can change energy. You can change your energy state anytime you want. I can, I can have you think of something that you love and you're going to have an energy state with that and your body's going to feel a certain way. And then I can have something you hate and your energy is going to totally change. You're going to feel that. And yeah. so like, it's not, when I talk about spiritual stuff, sometimes people are like, well, that's just in my head. I'm like, no, it's not. There are neuropeptides that come off your brain that release into the blood and they give you a physiological response. They call it the feeling, uh, I think it's called the feeling hormone or the feeling, uh, I don't, I know the, can't remember the name, but it's feeling something. And it's one of those things where we actually can think and feel. There's a whole connection. And the pathway that connects all that is a psycho psycho neuro immunological pathway. So this is how the mind can affect your immune system, how your mind can make you sick. It can make you healthy. Um, this, this is how we've been able to prove that. So um, going back to, I'm going to lose my thought there, but coming uh, back to it all. It's, you're on a roll, man. I love it. So it's one of those things where uh, it's, it's just using stuff to how do we then reframe what we're looking at and shift our gears. So you have to find a tool that recenters you. So mm -hmm. it can be uh, meditation. For some, what I recommend to my, my clients a lot, I tell them, go take a cold shower or jump in cold water. Mm. It's the easiest thing. And it's got to be cold. I mean, set it to the coldest. Like You're not going to like it. Yeah. Just deal Orange. with it. You'll get through yeah. it. Exactly. And the reason why is this. Once you jump in the cold, your brain, reptilian brain is going to fire up for a second and go, holy cow, there's a threat. You just threw it into a normal environment and now it went into something else that could be life-threatening. It's not like it can, your brain's going to pick up on your eyes and see what's going on. But long story short, what happens is, is the brain can't put resources now to what you're focusing on. It has to focus on survival. So it takes the charge off. But what then also happens is, is when you get through this and you get out of it, there's that sigh of relief. The stress is gone. You're good. You overcame. So now there's this feel good. You cannot, I've met to this day, because I know neurologically it can't happen. You cannot go jump in cold water and then come out and still be upset, angry, and frustrated. Go look at, just Google people who do cold plunges and jump in cold lakes and stuff, and you'll see them coming out smiling. Yeah. They're probably saying, thank the freaking Lord I survived it, but it doesn't matter. They're smiling. Yeah. And so these, these are little tricks you can do that. And these are just two of them. Breath work again is coming back to that because again, the whole purpose is, is how do we get you back to center so that you can take your power back because you gave it away. So like uh, sometimes when we get in these thinking, thinking, sometimes it's, we're thinking into the future and that's all, that's where your anxiety and your fear and your worry kicks in. Those are usually the emotions reside to there. Mm -hmm. And if you're in anything with anger, frustration, or resentment, that's your past. And so you, when you understand that these emotions are telling you where you are, then it's like, well, how do I get back here in the present? 
And that's what you have to find what works for you. I can tell you journaling. I can tell you gratitude. I can tell you affirmations. I can tell you think of anchor yourself into something you did great before that was successful. I have a lot of tools I can share with you, but at the end of the day, what works for you? Because that, that's yeah. what really matters. Yeah. You know, and, and like I said what, with you, the number one thing for me is meditation. Yeah, I think it, and it varies person by person, but those are great tools and great solutions. Um, and everyone needs to try all of them and see which one really helps and connects with them. And everyone has their own, yeah, you know, rebalancing approach. Um, I've got mine, you know, my wife has hers and uh, I'm learning my kids. And But as soon as you know that, you can really help and support those in your life too to go through those different tools and, you know, make encouragement, encouraging suggestions to use a tool or two. Totally. Yeah, because then you take your power back and then you can choose again. Yeah. What do you want that to be for you? Or what do you want to learn from that? Or right. deep dive deeper than to say, why is this continue to show up? There's something here. If it keeps showing up, there's something I, I'm missing here. And what can I learn from that? And it, it takes the power back to now choose that experience, whether than what most people will do is they just, they let that dictate their day, their week or whatever it may be. And now you're, you've given your power away and you continue to do that. And then you wonder a year or two or three years down the road, your life isn't what you want it to be, or you're struggling to get to where you want to get to, or you're not achieving it. And it really, again, like I said, most of the work I do is showing people how they give their power away. Yeah. Well, we give it away in a lot of ways. We give it away in social media. We give it away in our arguments with people that are pointless when you can just go, oh, sounds like you're in a bad mood. Why don't you take a minute and we'll talk later. <laughs> you don't have to engage, right? Um, the other thing too, I was going to say is, um, I think it helps to use your artistic brain, like create things, draw things, uh, you know, my, like my kids hardly ever use their artistic brain. So we have to encourage them to go and take a minute to draw, to create, to journal, to, uh, you know, come up with a story, tell a story, whatever, just come up with something innovative too. And that helps to activate that different part of your brain that you hardly ever use. Yeah. And you want to help them find too what works for them. Cause like, I don't like drawing. I just, yeah. and maybe cause I just wasn't exposed to it much, but there are other art forms. I love to cook. I love cooking. There you go. I cook at least twice a day and it's something that I enjoy. Uh, I grew up at six years old cooking. So it's one of those things where that is something I enjoy. I love woodworking. I didn't have woodworking skills. I, I'm not great at it as much, but I, I enjoy it. I can get lost into it a little bit. Uh, and I love, like, I'm starting to get good at it to where I'm like, wow, look at that. I made that miter joint cut really beautiful. Look how I did this. And I got this to go really nicely together. And it's just like, all right, I'm learning here a little bit. This is fun. Um, and it's my work of art. Like it's something I'm not like saying, oh yeah, look how amazing this is. I can care less about that. It's just me being in a moment and I created something and I've gotten to a point now where like when my wife wants something, I'm like just show me an image or show me a picture and most likely I can put it together. And that's just where my skill set wow. is now. And I'll look and I'll be like, yeah, I can do that. That makes perfect sense. Or sometimes I'm like, yeah, that one, I don't know how. And then sometimes I look and go, Pass my pay grade, honey. I love it. Looks amazing. Don't have the tools and I do not have the skill set for that. But I know where I'm at in the game, which is great. And that's just, you know, you find what works. Again, I, you'll see my message is very the same. Find what works for you because that's what matters at the end of the day. And it's just, you know, that's what I've learned over time. I took up board working about five, six years ago. So it's just not, it's just something that just came into my life. Um, I've always had an interest in creating and I always had an interest in like how structure is done in a building. I always, yeah, every time I walk in a building still to this day, I'll look and I'm always looking at the structure and I'm just like, that's cool. There's a beam there that supports this, this does that. And it's just, I, I had like a, a natural inclining to just like understand how that works. And so, but yeah. That's so cool. You and I have a lot in common, man. I do the same thing. And I picked up woodworking about four years ago and I've done a ton of wood. I built these shelves behind me. I've done a ton of projects in the house, a ton of different, you know, wood related or lighting related, or even now I love just planting things and working in the, the yard or improving some aspect of our yard or garden or whatever. Uh, that actually is an outlet now that I, I utilize a lot. Um, it's funny, my wife, I tell her to show a picture too. She shows me a picture. I never even look into further details than the picture and I just go and buy everything I need and I build it. It's crazy how my brain works and it sounds like yours works the same way. You can just figure it out and do it. Yeah, you do it. It's just a fun process and then it's, it's yours. Like you created it and it's yeah. just like, you know, when we first moved in our, when I bought my first house, I wanted to do a, a live edge dining room table, never built anything. I built the only thing I built was a bed frame. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to do this. And my wife's like, you know, this is a, not the, you know, it's a little higher up there. I'm like, I'll figure it out, you know, and it came out good. Now I look at it now, I would have done things a little differently, but yeah. it's like, 
but it came out great and it worked out well. And, and for the tools that I had, like my dad always says, he, he grew up in, he grew up in construction. So it's like, he's always says, if you have the right tools, you can do everything correctly. If you don't have the right tools, there's some tool, just, just need some tools for some things. And it is true. There's some things I do need tools for, uh, that to get it to a certain level. I can try my best, but, uh, but it's one of those things where it's just, you know, it's a fun little process. Yeah, absolutely. This has been really cool. I, I actually really like your way of thinking. I, um, I love the fact that you also have ADD. I can relate to you. Um, I love the way that you talk. You're definitely a fast, uh, speaker. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> and especially, I mean, think about it. Let's be honest. Those that are still listening to this podcast after what an hour and 10 minutes or however long it's going to end up being like, you know, do they have ADD or not? I mean, they're hyper focusing on this conversation too. So thanks for listening this long, first of all, but I think you speaking and getting a ton of content out quickly also helps. It makes it more enjoyable. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's uh, I'm working on slowing down, but it's like, I had a coach like seven years ago, eight years ago. She's like, you got to learn to slow your speaking down. And I was like, I Why? can't. She's like, <laughs> she's like, well, you know, because she's like, you, you got to speak at where people are. And I was like, listen, I will try my best. I go, but I'm at my best when I speak fast because yeah. I can process at what level. And I just finished my audible for my book and I looked at it and it was like four hours and some minutes. I told my wife, my wife's like, I'm not shocked. It's 56,000 words. I spoke in like four hours and 30 minutes. I'm like, I thought I was speaking slower. I mean, I'm trying my best here. So I, I, well, I, I was like, I should have put a disclaimer in the beginning. Like if you don't listen to things fast, put this at a 0.9 or something yeah. or eight or yeah. for you, you know? Or actually like yeah. point 0.4 for you, Vic. I think you're a point 0.4. Most people are like, you know, 1.2 and you're like, you know, no, actually, yeah, most people are like 1.0 and you're speaking at like point 0.4. I hear you. Yeah. That's good though. It's because you get in the flow state when you talk fast. So I really appreciate it. Um, so you got three books out there um, all on Amazon and yep. do you have a website where people can, you know, reach out to you for coaching and stuff? Yeah, you can get a free coaching call set up with me on my website, empoweryourreality.com. I have my podcast, blog, I do a bunch of freebies on there. And if you want to connect with me on social media, if you go to the bottom left of the website, uh, you catch me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn is where I play. Um, and any questions you may have, you can always DM me. I do read my DMs. I do respond to them uh, and just connect with my community. Yeah, that's cool. Now, that's a lot, man. You have a lot of socials, a lot of different, you know, uh, you got the coaching, the, the sessions, and you also have this podcast, which has almost 400 uh, episodes and you've been doing that for years. Do you do all this yourself or do you have like a team or what? Tell me. It's my Dude, passion. I, say, I call it my labor of love. I love it. Well, it's, it's, it's not, awesome. It's, it's not as hard. Like, don't get me wrong. I can do, like I always tell people, I had a, I was on a podcast and they were like, um, and he was just like, man, the amount of time takes me for post-production and this. I'm like, well, post-production is a pain in the butt, but I was like, but I have a system in place that just works for me. I'm not saying it's the greatest. Yeah. I, I know it could be better. I could hire someone who can do better, but I'm like, I don't mind. And I enjoy doing it. It's, it's, it's what I do. And it's quick and easy for me um, to knock it out for now. There's going to yeah. come a time. I, I already have the systems in place. I used to have someone who did it before in the past. And I've told them I want to eventually pass that on to you. But for now, I'm like, I still enjoy it until the day comes where I don't, then I'll pass it on. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep it a one man show so that I don't have to rely on other humans being sick or, you know, not being able to make it or scheduling conflicts. And I can work with just a, a guest, schedule it, make it happen, bring all the cameras and the mounts and everything, and then just handle it all myself because you can move at your own pace at that point. You're not relying on someone else. And it's much cheaper because people want to get paid for that work, right? So. No, of course. And I, I think it's, it, but you move, I think you, you brought up a good point. I think that's one of the reasons too, is I can like, I'll know like, okay, if I'm releasing on Friday, Friday morning, I'll get up early and that's going to be my thing. I have it built into my schedule to where it's like, all right, I'm going to get the podcast done here. I'm going to go on socials at this time and I get it done where yeah. if I had a plan, I have to take the time to send out, Hey, this is what I need done on this time here. You need to do this, make sure this gets done. Well, how do you want this to be written here? This is what we talked about. Here's what we wrote about. Here's what we're here. And, and by the time I explained it, I could have probably almost, almost had it done. But I like I tell people from a business perspective, you, it's, it's good to have the outsourcing. But when you enjoy it, I don't mind doing it. Um, I've built enough. I've been doing this a while now. It's where I have a system in place that just works really well for me. Like 
you know, and then in that system as it, I can get something done and finished like in, in a short amount of time. Uh, and, and it works out great. And I, yeah. I, um, like I said, I enjoy the process in the, in the whole, in the whole journey of it all. Well, I can tell you do, you definitely have that good positive energy about you. And it, it seems like you're really passionate about what you're doing. So good job. Keep it up. Um, you know, I like what you're doing. I like everything you're saying. I like your energy, your, your talking rate. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm glad we could, I'm glad we could pull up so quickly too, after getting introduced to you. I, I, uh, I'm glad we could get this scheduled pretty quick. So thank you very much. My wife lets me do one podcast any a week per evening. So uh, you were that one. And I was like, perfect. It worked out. I can make it happen. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. I'll let you know when this goes out. Uh, let's stay in touch. Um, you know, I want to, I want to circle back and see how things are going in the near future. And uh, don't be a stranger. No, same here. And then once it's out, let me know. I'll do my cross promoting email it, blast it out, do it on socials, all, the whole nine yards uh, awesome. to get that out there for you. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Bye, brother. Enjoy, uh, and look, and, and uh, congratulations on your uh, daughter to be soon. So make sure you're taking care of your wife. I'm sure she's, you know, she's ready to pop. So you got to take care of her. Oh, I'm, I'm there hundred percent. Everything I can do in my, in my willpower and my, my knowledge and my clinical and everything, you name it, we're, uh, you know, supporting her every step of the way. So it's going to awesome. be, it's going to be a fun process. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a ride. I've had, uh, I've gone through this <laughs> seven times. I have five living. We had two stillborns, but five, seven oh, times. Sorry to hear that. This. Yeah, it's life, man. You, you can't ever predict it's... how life rolls out and you just got to roll with it and learn from it. See, that's the way to do it. I mean, again, and then you look back and then what did it teach you? What did you go through? What did you learn yeah. about yourself? It's, it's, it's a lot. And, uh, it, I'm glad you guys see it from that angle. Cause I have, like, I have some people who do I know that still hold on to that type of stuff. And I'm like, I won't say anything, but it's like one of those things where it's just like, I want to, to be like, Hey, yeah. let's, let's look at this in a different angle. You know, uh, I could talk about it from a clinical standpoint, or even just from like when those things kind of happen or what shows up, what was the, you know, all these other stuff, but yeah, it's, it's, it's heavy a, stuff. That's probably a story in itself. You, you should interview me on your show or something, and we could talk about this because it's kind of fascinating. And just to like give you the high level, we have a one and a half year old now, and she's our angel baby because uh, uh, she uh, came totally unexpected. Doctor said we were done. Uh, she beat all the odds. It's like 1% of 1%. And we thought she wasn't going to make it. We, we thought she was going to have issues all through the pregnancy. So we didn't tell anyone. And she's totally healthy and cute little girl. And uh, that's after the two stillborns. And uh, the two stillborns definitely go through, take you through a spiritual kind of journey and depression. And it's a huge roller coaster ride. But I can only imagine. The, blessing behind all of it is that we have this girl that we didn't even anticipate and she's healthy as can be. And so, you know, sometimes things happen and you don't know why until later. The light after the dark, you know, after the darkness. Yeah. I love it. Thanks, yeah. man. It's funny. How, it's funny how you brought up the angel baby. Cause that's my sister. She oh, died twice cool. when she was a preemie. So anyway, I, I could go really? on and on. Wow. Wow. Okay. She died twice as she was a preemie. Uh, the second time the doctors kind of gave up and then all of a sudden the heartbeat just came out of nowhere. And uh, she's that she's, she is deaf, but, uh, because back then they couldn't calibrate oxygen levels as well as they can now. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, now she has two kids of her own and it's just kind of cool to see what she went through. And now she has two little ones and, uh, yeah. and they, it's, it's kind of cool to see that, 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 that different aspect of things. Ah, that's really cool, man. Hey, it's been a well, pleasure. We'll be in touch yeah. as a pleasure. And like I said, we'll be in touch and, uh, yeah, there'll definitely be a story, uh, let me get through some interviews for a little bit. And then uh, <laughs> probably in the fall, we can definitely, I'm trying to like, I'm actually stopping. I've stopped all any requests for anyone to be on my show right now. It's just because I'm so backed up and uh, it's a good thing. And it's not a good thing. Cause then it, it kind of takes away from like people I want to have conversations with. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. I would love to have a conversation with this person or that person. But I'm like, I gotta, I gotta burn up some of the stuff first. The content uh, the can, I you mean like getting it published? Well, no, it's just, I am, cause I'm, well, I have, I'm booked. My whole podcast is booked all the way up until October and that's mm. five a month. I only, I book all, I do all five in one day. And, um, and then, I, so I have all those and then I'm backed up four months from recording. So mm. you figure if I'm booked up until October, I'm really booked up. My schedule is booked out until February for recordings. Wow. Uh, and so I'm kind of like, all right, that's great. But then there's like some people who I want to interview or some people I had come across and I'm on their podcast. And I'm like, man, I'd love to have a conversation with them on my side. Let's, let's flip right. the script here. And yeah. I'm like, I got to hold off. So I'm kind of like, 
trying to choose choose somebody. This is why it's also nice to have the kiddo come around because I'm gonna start. I do two podcasts a week, and uh, one's me and one's with an interview. And I'm just gonna be doing. I'm doing interviews from here on out uh, until the end of July. And so hopefully that chews up a lot, and then I can start to pick and choose. Like, all right, you know, let's have a, let's let's hop on a let's have a chat and you know interview and go through this process and kind of thing. Uh, so that way, it's just because I'm looking for. For me, it's just the conversation, right? That's what I yeah. really care about on my podcast. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you'll meet people like, oh, I want to have this person who's at this level. And I'm just like, I, I don't really care about that. I've had people on who are like, some people who I, I, I've, I've, I've had like a product on something. They're an inventor to a scientist to a product. And I've known their product. I've used it for years. And all of a sudden they're on my show. I'm like, holy cow, this is awesome. It was one of the worst episodes I've ever done, interviews I've done. And it, it sucks because you're like so excited. Like I was so excited to have them on. And maybe it was my mindset and expectations were high. It could have been that, yeah. but it wasn't the type of conversation I was expecting. And I've had a couple of those where there's some people I really looked up to. And then all of a sudden they're on my podcast. I'm like, this is so cool. And the conversations were great. Then I get somebody who isn't like that. And we have a, like, not at that, at their level. And I have a phenomenal deep conversation about life and this. And I'm like, that's what I want. I don't care about yeah. this or that. I just want to have a good convo and share content that the listeners are going to care about. That's exactly right. I mean, educational and stories, you know, it, those always go hand in hand. And someone that can talk too. I've had some people that I've struggled. To, I got the question out and then it's like, I got a two word answer. And I'm like, okay, let me dive yeah. deeper. And then it's like, they it's repeat it in a different way. And I'm like, all right, this is struggling here. And then they give me their pitch and I'm like, all right, this is like an infomercial here. So I love yeah. it. I've been there, <laughs> man. Right. We've all had those stories. Well, we'll be in touch, brother. Uh, enjoy it. the evening and then we'll talk soon. All right, man. Take care, Vic. See you, bud. All right, brother. All right, bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's episode. I greatly appreciate your support. If this show is helpful to you and you're learning and you're growing through this amazing content that I'm capturing, then please go ahead to podcast, to Spotify, to YouTube and all the other channels and like, subscribe. Please provide a rating or a comment and then also share with your friends if you could. I would appreciate it. It helps this show continue to grow and it helps me be able to attract some truly amazing guests that can come on and give us some great insight great knowledge and wisdom that all of us can learn from. Thank you for being a supporter. Thank you for being a listener. I appreciate you and I appreciate all that you do. Thank you.